Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of Autopilot 8.1 2018 6.1 6.41EFAC. Yada yada yada, same thing over and over again, going through our normal loop. Um, one thing I will say about this update is it did introduce a Bluetooth glitch for me. It actually created some problems um, for my Bluetooth sync. I've lost the ability to do Bluetooth media for a while. I had submitted a trouble ticket to Tesla. Um, while I was waiting to hear back, somebody on the YouTube video that I posted about it had suggested just keep rebooting that center console over and over again and eventually would fix it, um, which I did, and it did. Uh, surprisingly, I'm surprised that rebooting and unpairing on both sides several times didn't fix it the first time, and now we're doing our loop. This is looking very good. Nicely done. Yeah, looks good. There I get the nag. Yeah, okay, I'm touching it. I'll go ahead and turn right and we'll do the standard loop. So on that section, it did a perfectly adequate job. Um, if it touched the lines, it barely touched them at all. And again, that's a, a pretty tricky section of turn. Speed limit that it is detected here is not accurate. So we're gonna go ahead and go 45. We'll go through the standard loop that we normally go through. But yes, as I was saying, uh, Bluetooth issues. I was not able to do Bluetooth media for a while, which was a bit of a bummer since you know, we all know that TuneIn doesn't work so great. And I like to listen to podcasts as I'm driving. But fortunately, after the third or fourth attempt at rebooting the center console, unpairing, repairing, unpairing, repairing on both sides, um, it just eventually started working. So, yay. But I guess other people have encountered this issue prior to the 6.1 version that I'm currently running. Um, I have had some opportunities to do highway testing with this. Uh, the 6.1 does seem noticeably smoother, but you know we'll do the same tests that we always do uh, to try and keep it as scientific as possible, even though real world conditions make that you know basically impossible. So we'll see how it handles the merge. It's doing a good job. Let's see if it runs into this car. This will be the last video I ever make. All right, made it over the train tracks just fine. 40, bump it up to, uh, it doesn't see if it picks up. Yeah, so even though it did change right when I passed that speed limit sign, I can confirm, definitely not reading speed limit signs. That is based on GPS data. So yeah, none of the other features that I'm constantly on the lookout for seem to have been enabled just yet, so um, I'm still looking at no speed limit signs, no cars in adjacent lanes showing up on the display unless you have the turn signal on. One thing that I have noticed, and again, this I say this every single time, but it's its true every single time, is um, stopped, oh, how you doing, how you doing? Oh, nicely done. Those were some sharp turns. It actually did that pretty well. Um, stopped car detection. And we have some stopped cars up here. Hopefully they'll still be stopped. Uh, now we got another one that I couldn't see over the crest of the hill. Um, but stopped car detection in this version seems better and putting big solid air quotes on that because I honestly don't know if it was just the specific conditions in which I was approaching cars in this particular instance. Maybe it has nothing to do with the firmware. All right, let's see what it does on this guy. Okay, that's pretty good. Ah, he slowed down. <laughs> Felt like I wanted to speed up there for a second. Um, all right, I'm gonna back up a skosh so I can go ahead and do the normal loop. But yeah, generally it seems like it's picking up stopped cars earlier and more reliably. I don't know if that's just, you know, time of day, lighting levels, color of the car, angle of the car, angle of the road. I mean, there's so many factors to take into consideration. So I honestly don't know if that's a result of this particular firm. I'd be actually curious to hear back in the comments if anybody else has seen similar observations. But so far, I've, it seems like I've been having a better result with that. But again, like I said, all the other features that we've been waiting on, unfortunately, so the Speed limit signs, that one, I've been waiting on that one for a long time because I loved that feature in my hardware one car. Um, as well as, you know, different vehicle icons, etc. However, if, you know, anybody who's been following the electric news knows that uh, there's been a lot of news and rumbling about autopilot. New features coming out, adjacent lane vehicle display, along with a, a whole new um, machine learning algorithm for autopilot, supposed to be a lot less ping pongy on wide lanes is coming no idea when you know it's it's always a case of you know it's it's great to hear all this news about stuff that's coming out but it's even better to actually get it so you know i'm not going to hold my breath but as soon as i get a new version especially one that actually has some advertised autopilot features not like all these ones i keep testing over and over again i will immediately get out here and i will start testing and let everybody know how it goes so here i'm just going to go ahead and make my standard right 
bump back up to 30, see how it does on this section of the road. Generally speaking, I find the autopilot performance on highways to be pretty good. The only issue is um, when a lane line drops away, it doesn't really stay centered in where the lane was. It tends to hug the one remaining lane line that it can see, which can result in some not bad behavior, but behavior that might be concerning to another driver. Like if I were in another lane and I saw somebody suddenly jerk over towards the lane line that I share in common with that car, I would be concerned that that car is inattentively about to change lanes into me. Yeah, it's handling this perfectly fine. that right curve with no issue. All right, and I'd say that's a good test. Um, yes, I'm touching the steering wheel. That is one thing I'm actually curious about. Um, it seems like the steering wheel detection could be better. I know it's based on torque as opposed to actually so having any sort of sensors in the uh, wheel itself, but I feel like, I don't know if it's the difference of this car to my old car or um, maybe it's actually just becoming less sensitive, but I feel like I have to torque the wheel harder to get it to recognize that I am, in fact, actually still here and awake and alive. But, um, yeah, that could just be my own personal interpretation. Let's go through the loop one more time, see how it does. That's a little close on the inside. But doing pretty good, not doing anything egregious like swerving into the bike lane probably come a little too close for a bicyclist's comfort. But yeah, looking good. Uh, so I think that's good for this test, and thanks for watching.